Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range to shoot a Type 99 Japanese sniper rifle. These rifles were produced during the Second World War. The Type 99 came later. The most common sniper rifles that a U.S. soldier may encounter on the battlefield would have been the Type 97, which was a 6.5 Japanese cartridge. The Type 99 sniper rifle is 7.7 Jap. There are a number of different variations of this rifle out there, and you'll find variations in the scope and also in the lengths of the rifle. The Japanese had made the transition during the Second World War from the 6.5 caliber, the Type 38, over to the 7.7 as their main infantry rifle, which was the Type 99. And so they decided they also needed to have a sniper rifle of the same caliber. Now it's interesting to note that when they went from the Type 38 and produced it as a sniper rifle, they redesignated it as a Type 97. When they produced the 7.7 Type 99 sniper rifles, they didn't give it a new designation. It was just Type 99 still and just called a sniper rifle. And you can see that by the markings here on the receiver. You'll also notice that the mum on this one has been struck out. Typically, you'll see that defacing of the mum having been done by Japanese forces after surrender, but you would also find that some American forces would strike the mums out. Uh, I've seen them both ground and struck. This one has been struck, it would seem, perhaps with a hammer and a chisel type device to deface that mum, which was the symbol of the Japanese emperor, and so something that they they, being the Japanese soldiers, wanted to destroy because when they surrendered their weapons, uh, their emperor was a living god and, and these were weapons were his personal weapons and they wanted that marking removed. You will find the Arasaka snipers with anything from a 2.5 fixed to a 4 power fixed and they also made a 1 to 4 variable powered 7.7 Arasaka type 99 sniper rifle. And then of course there was one, now these especially this one, you'll see that this one has no way to make adjustments to the scope. The scopes were zeroed to the rifles at the factory. Uh, they didn't want the soldiers in the field messing with their, you know, elevation or windage, presumably, and so they zeroed the guns to the optic at the factory. It's also interesting to note that they didn't do anything special, like the Russians would uh, hand select rifles coming off the production line to assemble into PU snipers. The Japanese didn't do that. They would just take any old rifle off the production line and turn it into a sniper variant. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but they also had one that was, that was adjustable. At the, in the very late part of the war, they did actually come up with an adjustable optic. I believe it was a four power, but it was a very clumsy uh, external adjustment system that used three knobs and you would have to loosen them and move the scope around and tighten them down. It wasn't as simple as uh, a modern scope where you have one dial for elevation and another dial for windage. It was a very complex arrangement. Now another thing that's kind of interesting to note about the Arasaka snipers is that when they, when they were in the field the Japanese soldiers would typically keep the scope that it was issued with with the rifle but for whatever reason when these guns came back into the United States this one has no import marks on it and this is a late war production gun you can tell by the way it's made um, the scopes were mismatched to the guns I don't know if troops were just swapping scopes or they were finding I, we don't know what happened but most of the rifles that you're gonna find available will not have a scope that was zeroed to the gun so the rifle I have here also has a rubberized canvas sling, which is correct. This is an original sling. You'll notice that it has a downturned bolt handle and a stripper clip guide. Pretty much a standard Type 99 action. Of course, it's based off the Mauser action. It still has the knurled safety lever there on the back that you can turn to put the rifle on safe or off but it's a lot harder to use with the optic in place because it's kind of hard to palm it you have to push it in with your fingers and turn it it's not quite as easy to use because of the optic the optic comes off the rifle very easily and let me show you how that's done so you have a little lever here you'll pull up on the spring-loaded detent and swing the lever around to the other side and then you have another little lever right here on my index finger you push this and the scope will just slide right off 
the side of the rifle. It's interesting to note that where the scope mount is, is where you would typically find the markings of the rifle. You'll also note that this rifle was not cut for the dust cover, so it was not intended to have a dust cover. And the serial number has been moved to the top of the receiver right here versus over on the side. And this is a Nagoya made rifle. I brought out some uh, domestically produced reproduction ammunition. It's made by PCI. It's uh, not match ammunition by any means, but I want to find out if this rifle actually will hit a man-sized target. We're at 100 yards and it should be fun to, uh, to play with. All right, that should do it. All right, guys, here we go. Moment of truth. I saw movement down there. I don't know if that was because it hit the paper. Ah, darn. Yep. Not on the paper. I'm going to go ahead and say that this, based upon where my iron sights are and where the scope is, Hitting right of the target will be my guess. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to use my iron sights here and see if that allows me to get on the paper. If so, then I'll know just how far off the scope is. Well, that's definitely on. So the iron sights are on. And as I feared, the scope is not. So let me see if I can hold over. The scope has an interesting reticle. I'll try to get a picture of it so I can show you guys what it looks like. So if the iron sights are on right there, the scope is over there. Huh. All right, let's see if I can do this. Wow, that 7.7's seven got some stiff recoil. Outstanding, so I've actually figured out the hold. What's funny is I'm using the 800 meter sight hash mark and I'm putting that right in the center of his chest and that's pretty much where it's hitting. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a few more rounds here. Now the 7.7 has some pretty stout recoil as you can see and this, this scope has a very short eye relief so it uh, it can, it can kick you in the eyeball, <laughs> leave a mark if you're not careful. I'm going to fire, let's see what, three rounds here using my holdover. And let's see if at least I can have a little bit of fun with this guy just using a hold. This thing's actually grouping pretty nice, guys. That's pretty cool. Well, at least now I know I can go out and shoot this every once in a while. It's been sitting around in my safe. The optics on this four power scope are surprisingly clear. Again, I'll try to get a picture and show you guys. Hit me right in the bridge of the nose. Yeah, 
that's kind of stringing the shots a little bit. And I will say this PCI ammunition isn't the most accurate stuff. And the trigger on this thing is really heavy. Yeah, for guessing, that's not too bad. <laughs> like I said, at least now I know where to hold so I can go out and play with this a little bit. We'll go up and uh, put up a new target, and now that I got my hold figured out, we'll see if we can't get something of a group out of this thing, but I'm not going to shoot it past 100 yards. What a fun piece of history to shoot, though. Let's run down range. If you guys enjoy the content that you see here on the Military Arms Channel, I ask that you swing by and consider becoming a patron subscriber and directly support the channel. Monetization on YouTube across the board, not just gun channels, but across the board, has been pretty much decimated. YouTubers don't make really any money at all to keep their channels up and running. And many of us have gone to Patreon to ask for you guys to help us keep our channels up and running. But I don't like to just ask you guys to donate to the channel. I like to give things back. We give back original content. I write a lot of blog posts. I post behind the scene images, stuff like that. Carry on conversations directly with my patrons. You can talk to me and I answer all questions. Plus we do a buyer's club through Copper Custom. We sell stuff at ridiculously low prices and that is only to our patron members. And you can find out from our new website that we've just built that we also have patron support there on the new Copper Custom website. And we'll talk more about that later. But if you guys like to support the channel directly instead of YouTube Red or something like that, please swing by and check out our patron page and the patron pages of your other favorite gun channels that are out there. Well, here's the group that I shot. So when I fired with my iron sights, this is where that round hit. Now, once I knew where my iron sights were and I had it on a rest, I could look through my reticle and see where the scope was. And right here, is where my 800 meter hash mark was. So basically I'm using my 800 meter hash mark on my ranging reticle for my 100 yard zero. Doing that and just kind of grossly aiming, I'll have four power, I can vaguely make out the, the A and things like that, but you're looking at about a four and a quarter inch group. I'm gonna see if I can't do a little bit better. A lot of that's the ammunition. Uh, it's not exactly match grade ammo, but um, keep in mind guys, the Japanese didn't really strive for extreme precision with the Type 99 sniper. Again, they just pulled the guns off the standard production line and then made them into snipers. They used them more as designated marksman rifles, if you will, although the term hadn't been used or hadn't been really developed back then, I don't believe but it was intended to increase hit probability with troops in the field. But they were employed as true sniper rifles. But, you know, I don't expect a Type 99 sniper or a Type 97 sniper to outshoot a standard 99 or um, a standard Type 38 rifle because they're right off the same production line. The only advantage is you either have a two and a half power or four power optic, which could shrink the group sizes, obviously, unless you're really good with iron sights. I'm gonna go ahead and patch this up with a Cadwell target. I ordered my ammunition from Graf and Sons, and a lot of the ammunition that I, I fire in these old military rifles that you'll see here on the channel will come from Graf and Sons. They have their own branded ammunition, but they also sell other brands like the PCI that I'm shooting this afternoon. And when I ordered my last order, they threw in some of these Cadwell targets. I think it's if you spend over 40 bucks or something, I can't remember. But now I have several of these Cadwell targets. This should make it a little easier for me to find a point of aim. Let's go back and fire a five shot group and see if I can do a little bit better now that I know what my hold is. All right, guys, I got five rounds loaded. I think I know what my holdover is now. And let's see what we can do. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there about Arasaka's. If you guys haven't noticed, I kind of like 
to collect air sockets. I have quite a few of them in my collection. And there's misinformation out there about them, about being poorly made or that they're unsafe to shoot, and that's simply not true. If the guns are in good working order, no bore obstructions, the actions are fine, um, just have it checked out by a competent gunsmith if you don't know what you're looking for. The gun's gonna work as good as any other rifle from that era. As a matter of fact, the Arasakas are probably some of the best built Mauser type action guns in existence. Testing after the war confirmed that. The steel in these guns is second to none. I think a lot of those rumors where the rifles could blow up in your face came from soldiers that brought home training rifles and put live rounds in them, and those would blow up. And uh, maybe that's where some of those rumors came from. But I can assure you guys, if you have a decent uh, Arasaka that's in good working order, uh, time hasn't gotten to it and damaged it in some way, they're perfectly safe to shoot just as any other rifle from World War I or World War II would be. I'm going to go ahead and fire my five rounds now at my Cadwell target. I think I know what my holdover is. Let's go ahead and uh, see if I can't get a decent group out of this little guy. The ammunition does have a soft point on it. I'll try to get a close-up there for you guys. I'll take a picture. All right. 10-pound trigger pull, stout recoil, and short eye relief. Makes for a fun shooting rifle. Here we go. Man, that trigger is atrocious. Kind of curious how I'm doing. Eh. Guessing the ammo's not that hot. I think we're still gonna have like a four inch group. <laughs> and we got one round left here. We'll see what she did. Well, let me look first. Got a bad feeling. <laughs> Not so hot. All right, let's go look anyway. I don't know, guys. <laughs> you can count the shots. One, two, three, four, and five. It looks like maybe this one, which is maybe a three and one eighths of an inch. From there to there might be my furthest distance, or perhaps this one. Yeah, about three and an eighth. This one, three and a quarter. So about a three and a quarter inch group. Eh, what do you expect? I mean, that's about average, I would suspect, for non-match grade ammo. There is some Hornady, I'm sorry, not Hornady. Um, they actually have Norma, has some ammo that's available for this rifle and it's really, really, really expensive. I think 10 rounds of it is like $40, but I'm kind of curious if that would give me a better idea of what the accuracy potential is of the Type 99. But yeah, I put my 800 yard hash mark right there and it hits pretty close to center. So there you have it, guys. That's about as good as I think I can shoot the rifle and that may be as good as a rifle to shoot with that ammo. I really hope that you guys enjoy coming out to the range with me and doing these range session videos. I mean, I don't really consider myself a reviewer. I'm more of a trigger puller. I like to bring you guys to the range with me as I'm playing with different items. Uh, usually it's a new type of firearm, but I do have a pretty sizable collection of cl uh, classic firearms like this Type 99 Sniper that I like to bring out to the range and shoot. 
truth be told, this is where my passion lies. If you look at my gun collection that I've acquired over the last, oh, 30 some years, you'll find a lot more classic firearms than modern firearms. So comment down below. I do try to read your comments, guys. I really do appreciate it when you do comment. Uh, I don't so much appreciate the trolling, but then again, who does? But you know, I do read the comments and I learn a lot from you guys. I, I don't claim to be an expert at anything. I'm certainly not an expert about Arasakas or Japanese rifles in general. I just have a passing knowledge of a wide variety of different firearms. Arasakas happen to be one of those types of rifles that I'm very interested in. I have a number of them in my collection. I'll do a couple more Arasaka videos in the future. I do have a Type 44 carbine, a uh, Type 2 paratrooper I haven't shown you guys and maybe one or two others. But we'll do those videos later down the road. I don't like to group that type of content up too much because I know I can bore you guys to tears. If you guys are curious about how much something like this costs, well, obviously they're not being made anymore, so it's a collector's market, all right? You're gonna have to get on a website like Gun Broker and bid against other people trying to buy the same gun. I just recently saw a very rare version of the Type 99 Sniper go for over $7,000. It was a similar rifle to this, except it had a very desirable one to four power optic. And this, again, is a fixed four power optic that's on this rifle. So it's just kind of what collectors are willing to pay for them. Uh, I've seen them go for $2,000, and I've seen them go as high as $3,000 or $3,500 for a sample like this one. Keep in mind the Type 97s are also out there. Very cool rifles. That's one Arasaka I don't have that hopefully I'll be able to put into the collection someday. I, whenever I find the money and the right gun, I'll pick it up and I'll do a video about it. If you guys know where there's a good 97 out there, send me an email. <laughs> I'll probably get blown up with emails and I won't have the money to buy the gun right away. But anyway, guys, I hope you do enjoy these videos. I certainly enjoy you guys swinging by, giving comments and following the channel and coming by the shop, which a lot of you guys do. It means the world to me and the rest of the crew behind the scenes here at the Military Arms Channel. Also, guys, if you'd be so kind, join the NRA. We, we really do have a unique opportunity right now. The NRA is under new management. The new management with Pete Brownell is very pro-gun, very politically active and very driven to turn back gun laws that are currently on the books. Don't expect that big ship to turn around overnight, guys, but please do join the NRA. If you use the link down below, some of that money will come back to me, but 100% of that money gets donated to Hero Hunt, which is a nonprofit organization that helps wounded warriors and first responders. It takes them out in the field and gets them hunting again, interacting with other folks, and it really does a lot of good. Guys, if you would also like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, of course, you can do Patron, which is, a, I have a link down below, but you can also swing by and check out Copper Custom, which is our online store. We just put up a brand new website. Please go by and check it out. It's, I think it's the best website in the industry as far as online gun shops go, but then I'm a little bit biased. But please do check it out. Also, guys, check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators, brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks for all those years of support. And for all those years of putting up with me, and I'll talk to you guys soon.